What's going on, everybody? This is an episode from the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast. Do you like podcasts and you want to see the full podcast? Make sure you check out the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast on all your podcast platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, among many others. But you're listening to the episode right here on YouTube, so make sure you hit that like button in below and make sure you hit the subscribe button to NC Studios and NC Level Up for all your gaming needs. This is the Nerd Coalition. Enjoy the show. I'm going to talk about, so the other day, it's been about six months since we heard from Triple H since his cardiac event. And from all the shows that I wasn't even expecting to see Triple H on, he pops up on Stephen A. Smith's show, Stephen A.'s World. If you guys listen, to, watch sports or listen to it on ESPN, uh, stuff like that, Stephen A. Smith has had a show that he's just not on first take. And, you know, people feel, you know, indifferent about Stephen A. Smith. Like I said, I'm a, I like Stephen A. Smith. I like his analyst, but there's times I, I, I don't like Stephen A. Smith. But um, I was surprised. I was like, I didn't too much would be on there, to be honest with you. So I was just like, okay, oh, so I, I was shocked. Like, we're seeing it here from Triple H. So, yeah, uh, but Triple H announced on there, along with other things, it came out and talked about his health and how it, it like, really was going on with his health. And his retirement. And I was just like, look, uh I I, I was I heard there was a it was March twenty fourth, nineteen ninety two, when Triple H started his career and it's like March uh twenty fifth, almost to the day, uh, where thirty years later where he ended his career in twenty twenty two. And I was like, Wow, that's something. So he was on Stephen A. Smith's podcast uh, show, and he revealed about the whole cardiac event that W. called it, and shows that hey, Triple H was damn near near death. Like this was serious, and he, he talks about you know uh, leading up to that, what was what was uh, what was going on about his his near death incident. And he said that um, he was, you know, obviously go, going on the road a lot. But then all of a sudden he started getting sick and he was short of breath. And then he thought he had COVID. Now, he had COVID already. And he's been vaccinated. And, you know, uh, you know, he, he has all his shots. And that, that He had COVID before. So he felt as though that he was catching COVID again. But uh, when he got tested for COVID, it wasn't COVID. And then when Stephanie sees that he was coughing up blood, they took him to the hospital. Obviously, the emergency room. And then uh, when they went to go check, they, they, they were saying that, uh, you know, he has a his, his family has a history of having kind of heart disease. And, you know, it wasn't really, you know, I mean, he, he, he knew about it, but, you know, he didn't really have no signs of any, having any kind of heart disease or anything like that. And then he was saying that, uh, he said, your heart pumps out 55, 65% of your uh, election uh, faction is a good number. He was at 30. Then he got a quick text saying that, don't take time, pack a bag real quick, and head to the emergency room. We'll fill you out on the way. And when he got to the emergency room, it went down from 30 to 22, I believe it was. And then it went down to 12. And this man was like... In heart failure. He's technically still in heart failure. And he um, was getting all these procedures. He started kind of like getting choked up a little bit and saying that he did not know that every time he went to sleep for one of these surgeries or these procedures, if he was going to wake up. And he started thinking about his kids, his three kids that he has and his and his uh, and Stephanie and of course his wife and everything and it's like you know you really get hit uh with it you know uh hard he was saying like they, they have three young girls 15 13 and 11 suddenly i came home i'm a little bit sick and their dad who is strong always suddenly is in the hospital and i don't know if they understood the consequences of it but there are moments when they when they're when they're pulling for a uh, pulling you out for stuff and you think uh is this it do i wake up from this and he said that's a, that's tough to swallow and it makes you think 
differently. He was in a nose dive. He said, I was on the one-yard line of where you don't want to be for your family and your future. So, and uh, Stephen A. Smith was like, you know, basically kind of asking, like, why now to come out about this? Because obviously he's been a very vocal guy about this. And when it first happened, opposed to, but then, you know, coming out about it, uh, about it now. And he was just saying, you know, it, uh, he didn't want to misquote or mis talk about anything that was going wrong with him and, or basically miss, miss spoke about it. And he also basically said, uh, when it comes to in ring, he's done. And he says, uh, I will never wrestle again. And he has a defibrillator in his chest. And he says, it's not a good idea for me to get zapped on live TV. And it was just like, yeah, because, you know, the defibrillator and, you know, like, a, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the other thing called? Not a peacemaker or uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a something that goes in your heart because I know when my mother was in the hospital, they was trying to give her one. And it's something that helps, you know, regulate your heart and help your heart be a certain type of thing like that. And um, he has that shit. So, yeah, he, he can't take bumps or doing that kind of crazy stuff anymore so this one right here was him retiring and of course WWE was right on as soon as he said that they put out tweets and everything that Triple H has officially retired from Emory competition and there were plans he was talking about for for him to wrestle at Wrestlemania 38 they were talking about it last year with Vince stuff like that but obviously those out the plans now and like I said Honestly, I didn't need to see Triple H wrestle again at WrestleMania 38 at all. I don't need to see all the old older guys come back, which which you see WrestleMania is a lot these days. But um, before we you know get to career Triple H, give me some of y'all thoughts. You know, because I've been kind of quiet on, on this front. I want to hear. I'm surprised people were shocked that he retired. Like, <gasps> like yeah, this man almost died. He's not about to wrestle again. Like. And then again, people don't love Triple H that much for him to be wrestling with a peacemaker. Like. People don't love Ric Flair that much, and he be still trying to come back at eighty years old or whatever old he is. So it's like, yes, yeah, because Flair is nuts. <laughs> he is nuts. Yeah, I mean, but, he, um, but, 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 but go ahead, kid. Yeah, nah. Um, I mean, Triple H is a legend. Already said, cemented his stone. He really ain't got nothing to prove with even trying to get back in the ring. Um. <laughs> This man could have cut his hair off. After he cut his hair, he didn't have nothing to prove then. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> he could have retired then, but I guess, obviously, you know, he's still a big attraction, but still. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I, I think, hmm, I'm trying to say it sensitively, quote, unquote. People reacted like he passed away or something. Yeah. And it's like, yo, he just announced his retirement. Like, Taker just did it, what, two years ago? Relax. Like we're we're still going to see Triple H around, just not wrestling. Are we though? Probably not the way Vince <laughs> acting, but who knows? It, which which lets me think, like, cause look, I understand there's a a, a strict schedule. I said, especially with Vince being an exec, but how everything hit him at once. I would think, like I said, I, I I'm not a doctor. I'm not him, and I know there's only certain things he's, he's, he can say or will say, to be honest with you. But I'm, I'm saying, though, but after the whole thing with the um, NXT, I was like, that had to, you know, kind of rock him kind of hard. Especially with, uh, like, that, to me, that was what this old Triple H's legacy will be. Mm-hmm. Of uh, that NXT, him going out there, and of course, you pe- there not there are a lot of people that don't like the way he did it because basically he just he raided Ring of Honor, got all their top people, and wanted to create like a a, a universal global indie uh, promotion of his. Like and they, were try- they were trying to do NXT, they did NXT, they did NXT UK, probably tried to do NXT Japan, NXT also. It, 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 it was trying to really go around and expand. You know that, that kind of stuff, but for him to go out and get the the talent, like if you just list the talent that Triple has, you, that they have gone through NXT from Sami Zayn to Kevin Owens to Neville or Adrian Neville, you know when he, uh, Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe 
and Apollo Crews and Tom Who? Bree, huh? Who? We were really about to do this about Shinsuke Nakamura. Did you ever? I didn't say. I said. <laughs> nah, right, never mind. Keep going. Uh, and then you know, from, from the women, from Bailey to Bianca, Bel- uh, Bianca Belair to Sasha Banks to Becky Lynch to Charlotte to Oscar, Io Shirai, like all these names that have gone there and have really made the black and gold what the black and gold is. And Adam Cole and Giant Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa and all, all those all those guys. And like I see when, when Keith Lee came in there, this, he would just bring them in there and let, let, let them be them and, and create a, like a successful brand. Where NXT, I remember when NXT was putting on better shows in the main roster. And this is before this is this is even before USA. They was putting on better shows, and back when the, the network first came out, and they they put on their first like takeover, which is their pay per view, and where WWE got intimidated by because what was it, Takeover Revolution? So the, the whoever the one was right before, uh, WWE TLC and Stairs pay per view. That's the one. Uh, that you remember t- tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs is back the only reason why I, the only reason I remember that is because of how good the, the, the takeover show was. They they were trying to prove that they could be good too. But remember that, that that's a takeover show that had like Sami Zayn and Cesaro. I think it had the Fatal Four Way. Oh yes, our evolu- that's either our evolution or Fatal Four Way. One yeah. of the two. Yeah, and then remember they had the, that, that great Fatal Four Way match between the, the four horsewomen. Oh, that fatal four way. Oh, that, that was our evolution. Yeah, yeah. So, that was because I, damn I good believe show. that was Kevin Owens' debut. I think. I oh, think. Okay. So, so that, that, that that couldn't have been Sammy versus Cesaro. That had to be Sammy versus Balor, or I, I don't know. Whatever the case was, but that's what you know. Uh, that was you know though it, it they they were really making noise, and that's what NXT was the best thing going in that company. I used to love uh, going to NXT. The NXT had a little bit of a down, a, a down point, but then they tried to put him into the main roster, stuff like that. But that's where most of his legacy lies from. And then, of course, you know, when it comes to his wrestling career, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. And yes, Triple H will be going in the Hall of Fame as a solo act, not just a member of DX. You know what I'm saying? He, he deserves to go in as, as a solo he deserves to go in there as exec. He deserves to go in there as member of Evolution. He, he deserves to be that many times of a of a Hall of Famer. But uh, yeah, it was it, it was just I wasn't shocked that he, he uh, about his retirement because I my personal opinion he needed to retire a while ago. I don't think that Saudi Arabia match that they all wanted to make some quick money for should have ever happened. Oh, please skip that. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, I, 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 I don't think I, that Saudi Arabia thing should have never happened. Ladies, get your shit up here. And I want to get your touch away from which I know you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Could you please give me your, you know, your thoughts? I was eating that cheesecake. I was trying not to um, talk and smack in the mic. Um, I mean, yeah, pretty much had everything. It was kind of like... I figured you was retired. Like I, I, it was like a. I'm not surprised you're retiring. No, I'm not gonna react like um, Q was saying. Folks is acting like he died. Well, I mean, well, some of some of the, the, the tweets you you were telling me was simply uh, it was kind of some hurtful tweets. You oh, you're over. talking about the okay. So I did see some things, where, some comments people were making, where they were just like, "Oh, well, this is karma," kind of thing. Because of the way he was treating China and some of the other dirty things he's done in the business. And I was just like, uh, I personally would not say that. I don't want... Um, People was definitely bringing up the Booker T. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, I didn't yeah. even see the Booker T one. They was just saying... It was mostly people riding for China and saying that he did some other wild stuff, including the Booker T thing. But um, that was it. It was pretty much one side or the other. Folks were saying either like... I mean, you know, that was you had a he had a good run. That's cool and all. We understand why you were retired. Um, I did see other people saying WWE, like you were saying before, WWE made it seem like it was nothing serious. Like you know, they said what a cardiac episode was that what they said? Yeah. 
This is That's a, not a cardiac episode. Having is. heart failure is not a cardiac episode. I mean, technically, yes, but way to downplay it. Mm. Um, but again, that could have been his own call as well, because he's not necessarily entitled to tell us what's wrong with him. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, it was either you know he had a good run, happy retirement, or oh well, that's what you get because of all the stuff that you did. And I was just like, I'm gonna just chill over here because th- that's a bit extreme to me personally yeah. i don't agree with the way he treated china mm. and some of the other things that he's done but i'm not going to say that i don't want to <clears> bring <throat> the bad karma on myself that's crazy to me um, no but i mean no, nobody is out here perfect and i don't want nobody just to, to, to die because they did some shit that i didn't you know didn't like in wrestling which every other wrestler did uh so you know that, 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 that's just cool. yeah your favorite wrestler I've heard plenty of podcasts talk, podcasts talk about this. Your favorite wrestler, no matter who it is, including mine, including anybody's out there, has did has shit. Has done some wild shit. Shit that you ain't going to like. You damn sure don't want those story of. I mean, the it's, difference is, like I was saying before when I was telling you this, I think the difference with that is, like, we know no, nobody's perfect. As we honestly just seen tonight. Everybody's human. People have breaking points and emotions can boil over and things like that Mm -hmm. however i think it was the very public demise of china yeah that really soured people um and that was the that's the difference a lot of folks do stuff and you don't necessarily see it or hear about it or you hear about it but you don't we're not really confronted with what um with like what comes after that you know like all the stuff a perfect example a lot of the dark side of the ring stuff yeah you heard rumors about it or you heard people talking about it but you never really had to see it in your face but the whole thing with um china is still even still an ongoing thing she's still not in the hall of fame by herself Uh uh-huh so it was just like, um, okay. So I think it really has just kind of, uh, only only word I can think of right now is soured some folks uh-huh. on him. Uh, but like I said, I just, I mean, I'm not surprised he's retiring. You don't really need to get back in the ring. Some. I mean, it's sad that it took something like this happening for you to say, all right, I'm going to just step back. But there are plenty of people who um, wear out their welcome in the ring. Yeah, everybody doesn't get the, the, get the call, get the retire on their own terms. I, mm-hmm. I mean, and, you know, I know I got, got to do it on his own terms because... He should have. Uh, no, I'm about to say... The boy, the boy was good. He got, he got to do it on his own terms. And he, he, and he went out on a, on a good note. That was better. Yeah, that was better than what, than what originally have <laughs> him go out on a bad note. But the flip side of the coin, Stone Cold didn't go out the way he wanted to. Great match, but you know he didn't. Uh, that's how that part of the way he, he didn't think that was gonna be his last one. Yeah, I mean, uh, and when Shawn Michaels had it his way, he he ended it on his terms, like you know. Uh, with that with that match, he's gonna take a rest twenty six. So you know everybody has. But you know, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. Go ahead. No, go ahead. And I'm pretty sure Kurt Angle, damn sure, they went in his career going against Baron fucking Corbin. And that's what <laughs> I'm saying. I think that's why a lot of folks, you, for a lot of things, but especially <clears throat> things that are hard on your body. Uh huh. Where they just like you need to leave it all on the mat or all in the ring or whatever you want to call it, because. Any match you have could be your last. Think about it. Big E came off that lackluster title run. Got thrust back into uh, New Day antics. Mm-hmm. And then gets his neck broken. He could very well never wrestle again. Mm-hmm. And that's what he has to leave out on. Same thing with Stone Cold. Edge probably thought he would never come back again. Mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan. Same, same with Daniel Bryan. Yeah. So it's like you gotta, you gotta go through every match like it's gonna be your last one. Cause if that's the lasting impression you have, is that the one you want to leave? And that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but that's how it is. Yeah, that's that's. 
It's unfortunate for him, but I'm just saying, but you know, right now it's about the health. Mm-hmm. And like I can say, and this man technically, technically, it's still a heart failure. Mm-hmm. So, we, we, like, we don't know if it's going to it's talk towards the good side or the bad side. We still don't, we don't even really. We, still, we, we really don't just know yet with his family having a history of the heart disease and the back, you know. Uh, that is, is telling, but my feelings on Triple H, though, in this part of time, it's like, you know, Triple, Triple H was never the guy. He was just the guy that worked with the guy. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's what choice. But I still believe, in my personal opinion, I know we could have some other opinions out here. Triple H's greatest run, in my personal opinion, the best choice has ever been is two thousand. Triple H in two thousand. Uh, when it came to that McMahon Helms the era, and when Mick Foley put him on the map. I believe that was Triple H's greatest run. In my personal opinion. I'm about to say, y'all know I'm an evolution baby. I came in around that time. Oh, so you a rate of terror Triple H guy? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no. But, I mean, I, I get it. What about <laughs> you, Brian? His best era. Uh, <laughs> uh, Triple H. Triple H's best era to me uh, would probably have to be uh, in the early 2000s when he was still kind of when he still had the My Time theme. So I might, I might say old. Well, nah, I'm saying old two. Now nah, I'm saying obviously 2000 to 2002 is probably my one of my favorite eras of Triple H because he was just the most hated, heinous person. But then he was also like still very, very, very good. He can move off. Mm-hmm. Uh, all over. So yeah, I would say that era. Okay. Two man power trip slash my time slash the game. <laughs> yeah. So for those real quick, uh, I'm going. If y'all have not seen, kind of like what I did when we talked about when Scott Hall passed away. I said Joe was just retiring. But if y'all are, if y'all just so used to like new Triple H, like my son had to go back and watch old Triple H stuff. And if y'all. Are not familiar with Triple H, I will I will recommend some matches, for my personal opinion, that I think if y'all want to if y'all want to know more about Triple H, these are the matches that y'all should check out. These are some of my personal favorites. Uh, I would say the latter match between him and The Rock at SummerSlam '98. Well, first of all, by the way, I, I I've been hearing this debate to Triple H to Triple H is retired. In y'all personal opinion, what was the better version of DX? Him, China, and Sean, or him, X Pac, and the Outlaws? Him, X Pac, China, and the, and the Outlaws. I was about to say, I didn't know there were two different versions. Oh, really? Kip, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Q, oh my Q, man. Yo, yo, Prime, relax. Last time a Philly dude got disrespected. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. So many jokes you want to make right come now. Come on, come on, come on. We come on. punishment. Stop. <laughs> he walked me right into that. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. No, 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 yes, no, 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 no. Was... All jokes aside, though, I really didn't know there were two different versions. Like, I, every time I seen DX, it was all of them. So, I seen them. it started it was Triple H, China, Shawn Michaels, and Rick Rude, and then Rick Rude left. Yeah. So then it was just them three, and then Rick Rude. See, that's what I'm saying. I ain't know that. Well, Rick Rude was only in it for two weeks. So. Yeah. And so, then like, like, um, he, was, he was at the, the very, very beginning, but then he went with the end of yeah. Now, so. Yeah, like he was with them before they had a name, before they was DX. So, you know, before they had gotcha. the theme song and everything, he was there. And then, um, and then um, Sean left at WrestleMania, and then the next night. The next night after WrestleMania, Triple H brought out X Pac and the New Age Outlaws to join the group. And then um at one point though, they all were together at one point. Yeah, but I didn't at, I didn't I didn't that was like one smackdown. I think it was like a few I think it was a few weeks. So that's they was together more than one occasion when he was the commissioner. Yeah. Like, granted, it could have been trying to get on his good side. You don't remember do you remember that episode? They were trying to get on his good side, and then, like, the next week, they beat him up? Yeah, I, th- I-, I thought that was probably, oh, yeah, Smackdown, or, or, or what happened at Judgment Day, right? One of the ones where they beat him up. Well, oh, okay. They had just, one of the ones where they beat him up, but it was, he was there for, like, i say two weeks when he was the commissioner. Uh-huh. 
Because uh, I think when actually, I know I'm rambling. I think when he first returned, he was he was like coming back to join them, and then he was joining them for two weeks, and then he left again. So I think it's in that small space. Mm. Yeah. Because I have watched a couple of segments with with all all five or six of them. So there is is it is this somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, but for future episodes, yeah, there's, there's two versus DX. There's the there's the gotcha. strong led DX, it's, and then there's the triple H technically, led technically, DX. It's, technically, it's three. Technically. Okay, then then when they, when the, they get then they they get back and it was Triple H and Sean, but then uh, Triple H was the leader and Sean was just like there. Yeah, because okay, yeah, so and then after Sean got saved and whatnot. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the DX that my son knows. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> me personally, the the 2006 one is more tolerable than the 2009 one. The 2009 one, I was so like, they had this, horn swaggle? Yeah. Oh my god. The only thing funny about the 2009 one was the little people's court, and other than that. That was, yeah, that was funny. That that, that was so, funny. So, well, is, that era, you, is that the era when uh ain't you supposed to be Jamaican with Kofi Kingston? Yes. 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 I that, remember that. that I era. remember that night. I remember okay. that night. Just... So so Q, have you ever so you never seen a DX segment where they where uh Triple H and Sean come out as Vince and Shane? Yeah, I remember that. Okay, okay. So yeah, so, so, that's, so you, yeah, you, that's, that's uh, that. yeah, that's 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 O six DX. And he kept doing the air. He kept doing the air tug. Yeah, for uh, yeah. what? Yeah, what yeah. Doing? remember you know Sean talking jive with Crime Time, and then uh, Sean also giving Ty Dillinger this some random super kick in the back. Oh, See, I remember. That. I just can't I just stand. Can't stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's area DX. But I, out of those, I want to know which, which one was your favorite version of DX. Yeah, I like the one with all with. I like the one with uh, New Age Outlaws and uh, you know Xbox because it was. I guess it was just more. They had more fun because it was just doing yeah. stupid stuff every week. <laughs> like, that, I'm gonna go with that version too, with. primarily because that's the only version. And, and then they had the invasion too. The invasion of WCW happened yeah. with that DX. So it was like I think they just had more like when they were Triple H and Shawn Michaels. They was it was just them two doing stupid stuff. But they was like they kept it in the ring while that version of DX was like doing stuff outside of the ring and then doing though segments. When they did that whole you know uh, public service announcement, he was I was up all night. Oh I did yeah, like, well, yeah, yeah, that one was funny. <laughs> you know I, I did like that. So, uh, but then you know they, they had like they had the DX Express. Yeah. <laughs> they had like just random stuff, just random like outside. That was just randomly like in the bar one. Like it just. You know, it was more outside segments, which I just like, I guess. Yeah, so I, I, I did. I, I like the, I like the Triple H led DX with X Pac and the Outlaws. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I did that, but uh, I would say um, the Rock Triple H ladder match from SummerSlam '98. <laughs> uh, wait, quick question. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, another quick question, because there take there's there's still two versions, because technically at one point, <laughs> Kane. Was in DX. Don't no no no. no. <laughs> they had the, they had to run DMC. They had to run DMC thing no, song and everything. No no. It was it was it was Triple H, Stephanie, X Pac, Tory, the New Age Outlaws, Kane. Kane like Kane, what? first of all, Kane was not. Cause remember, I just you know it's funny. My son just watched this SmackDown this morning. This is when Kane. <laughs> with Kane remember it was X Pac and Kane the, the, the whole DX thing. Uh, join back up. This like this like November oh, yeah. of ninety nine, and then X Pac screwed Kane over against the Dudley Boys. So uh, and he was talking about the X Pac and Toy Christmas story because yeah, you know Toy was doing was was messing with Kane. Kane was like was it for like trying to be I remember DX for, like a a week and that was it. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, yeah that I thought DMC that was supposed to do a green singlet. They were supposed to do a green singlet. I mean, the green cane outfit, which would have been terrible. Yeah, that that would have been terrifying. That would have been no. Yeah. And I'm like green with envy. Like, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. But no, I. I uh, imagine Kane coming out to the. Imagine Kane coming out to the run DMC thing or something, though. <laughs> that thing was. That thing was crap. Right. <laughs> that thing was. That, that, oh, my God. Uh, But yes, I would say the Rock and Triple H SummerSlam. Uh, Triple H versus Cactus Jack 
uh, Street Fight at Royal Rumble 2000. Triple H versus The Rock, and in my personal opinion, the best Iron Man match that WWE has put on. Uh, because a lot of Iron Man matches be boring, but The Rock and Triple H one was uh, entertaining. And that's when Undertaker first came back. American Badass Undertaker came back, so I like that one. Uh, yeah, lots of it too. The Rock versus Triple H from Backlash two thousand, when Stone Cold came back. Uh, I I will say, three stages of hell, of. Twitch versus uh, Stone Cold from No Way Out 2001. My personal opinion, I think the Unt- him versus Undertaker at WrestleMania X7 is the best one. Now, Which your name is Matches, and I will say Triple H is a good wrestler, but I think Triple H is more known for his moments and his like segments more than his matches, to me at least. No, no, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, like I said, because the matches I'm naming is like, you know, because now the one I just named, I thought it were like really good matches, also. Because and also these matches is the matches where you Triple H sold it to where you want to see him get beat up. So it's like okay, exactly. That's he it. That's it. That's it. Two thousand, two thousand one era is fine, but me personally, when he came back two thousand two, I was just like he is way too top heavy. And then that, that whole reign of terror thing happened because he was he was really trying to be like the most evilest person. I was like it did not. It was not because that's when we got Katie Vick. That was stupid. That's when we got Booker T. That's when we got RVD. Oh shit! Triple H versus uh, Chris Jericho fully loaded. Last man standing match is one is their best match. Chris Jericho and Triple H. Yeah, because that Mania match was was trash. That Mania match, <laughs> that Mania, that Mania match was trash. The Hell in the Cell match was trash. Yeah. You know so, but. The, the, their match at fully loaded in the last man standing match that was their that was their best match and I'll, I'll recommend y'all y'all go uh, check that out also and w- when it comes to like, like I said me in the reign of terror Triple H the only match I really liked and it wasn't really his match was the uh, the elimination chamber from 2000 to the first one yeah he almost broke his neck uh, RVD kind of messed that thing up <laughs> and uh, also the triple threat match at WrestleMania 20 with him, Sean, and Voldemort. You mean you mean the the uh, oh I remember that match. the one on one match that he had at WrestleMania 20? No, you heard me say and both and both of them and both of them did. lost. And both of them lost double count out. <laughs> double count out triple threat match, right? Right. <laughs> but other than that, Triple H in like the the 2000s, I don't think it was that great. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't think. Was that great? And then, of course, when he came back, like I would credit, like and then all of a sudden, it's like he got like a quick second win in two thousand ten. And I would say, you know, him versus Daniel Bryan at uh, WrestleMania is a match you guys can check out. Evolution versus the Shield. You know, when he had Blue Tista, which Blue Tista was very upset about. Plan B. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the evolution versus the the, uh, the shield rivalry. Uh, you y'all go check that out. But like, and then of course, then there's the times you know there's matches that there's gonna piss or moments where too much is gonna piss you off. Like Sting, that pissed me off. Ooh. You know, or Booker T, that pissed me off. Or uh, he, he, he CM Punk. That pissed me off. Wait, what did he do with Punk? He, he beat him? Oh, yeah. He had a, yes. <laughs> he, he had a should, whole there, thing with Punk. There's like, no on, reason man. Triple H and, uh, what was it, probably Night, Night Champions 2011? Yeah. That he beat CM Punk in a no-squalification match. And I don't care if it took three pedigrees. He didn't, because CM Punk at that time, that's when he was three doing the whole pedigrees. summer of Punk thing. Yeah, because uh, um, Triple H was in the office at this time. So, like, all basically CM Punk was just like, Basically, CM Punk pulled a pulled a Chris Rock. He's like, "Your wife gotta do everything for you." She, oh yeah, she, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this she's a man of the like family. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and that's what CM Punk was like white hot. And next thing you know, here goes Triple H. Triple H gotta work with the guy. That's the guy. And the next thing you Boy, know, they shovel up. And then uh, Kevin Nash was supposed to wrestle him, but that didn't work out. All a 
both Triple H and Kevin Nash matches suck. Oh, uh, remember the Sledgehammer on the pole match? No, the the Sledgehammer ladder match. I mean the Sledgehammer ladder match. Yeah, Kevin Nash in the ladder match in 2012. In tw- absolutely in- not. What? That was dumb. That was dumb. Triple H in the ladder match in 2012 too, and then you had the, the, the Kevin Nash Triple H Hell in the Cell match. Uh, it was a Bad Blood or Judgment Day. Bad. Uh, bad blood because the stage was was nice for it. Oh yeah, I was like, all the Triple H and Kevin Nash matches suck. I'm sorry, I know they friends in real life. I know they part of the clique, but Triple H and Kevin Nash have no wrestling in-ring chemistry. chemistry. They have no in-ring chemistry at all. I mean, Kevin Nash had great matches. With, uh, had good matches with Sean. He had good matches with Scott. He had good matches with uh. uh Oh, he never faced Sean. I, I mean, X Pac. Not that I, I mean, he probably did like a tag team or something like that, but one on one. But when it comes to him and Triple H, he do not got no chemistry, chemistry with him at all. Yeah, but I mean, I also would suggest Triple H to Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam, obviously. Which SummerSlam? How many times did they fight at SummerSlam? I'm trying to think which SummerSlam you're talking about. Oh, thought- 2002. You right? Yeah. Yes. I'm not yes. saying did they fight more than one that I don't know. I, I'm sorry, because I, I was thinking about that whole rivalry, and I was sitting there like, okay, because there was that one, then there was the three seasons of hell one at Armageddon, then there was the hell. Oh, in that the was cell. good too to me. Yeah. Then then there was the hell in the cell one, at uh, the, that that fucking fifty minute hell in the cell match at. Uh, now that one I don't remember. I'm kind of glad I don't remember. I don't have <laughs> literally have no recollection. I didn't even. I really have no recollection. You, 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 you remember, it, it, it had a last man standing at Royal Rumble 2004, and then Bad Blood 2004. And they had. A, I remember the Royal Rumble because I think Sean super kicked him and fell on him, and then like, like had a double pin well, or was, something. It, well, uh, Sean couldn't answer the ten count. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then, then they had the the match uh, with them two in Hell in the Cell, and they was just like, okay, that was cool, but this shit didn't need to be fifty minutes long. Yeah, I don't even. I'm not even. I don't even think I'm gonna go back and watch that. I have no recollection. I really. <laughs> but this is good. I don't. Um, I don't know. Too much. Too much to get like Edge sometimes, where they they feel as though that the match got. Too like the original Edge. Yeah, it's like your matches don't gotta be thirty minutes long. Bro. Yes, they have to be. Where do you think Edge get it from? Yes. They, my match have to be the longest match on the car. How else would they remember? Oh, I, I, I already know him. It's going to be the long, longest match on this year. You got to build up the story. How else will they like my match if it's not 40 minutes long? <sighs> that too. But, you know, to, to, to Triple H, you know, see, he had, he's had a great career. And I, I it's unfortunate with the, how the, the NXT thing has gone down with it. I mean, he sort of looked look for talent, but... um. Yeah, he's retired, so... All right, well, real quick. Yeah. I, I had to give a suggestion for Q, because I doubt he's seen this. I, he probably has. Like, she said, she said like, he, capital doubt. <laughs> yeah, right? I probably haven't, though. Q, have you seen Triple H on Tough Enough? Uh, okay. Uh, Let me ask this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask. I remember... Business. I remember um, <laughs> seeing a clip where he was uh having them... Punch, or no, he was punching them, having them set up, <laughs> and the one dude wasn't really solid it right. He's like, if this dude, was a real match, tell you for real? Deck, yeah, I would have, yeah. And then he had them, uh, uh-huh. take a bump. You gotta, you gotta go back and watch that whole segment. The whole segment is funny to me because it's like one dude took a bump, he was like, hey. Uh, you, you, one of your, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. One of your balls is out or something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, he was just randomly talking. I don't know why this sticks in my mind today. I say, I just randomly say, don't know. Because he was like, so you want to be a wrestler? Why you want to be a wrestler? She was like, I don't know. Oh, so you just seen on TV, thought I want to get beat up for a living? She was like, yeah. And then he was like, uh, so the, do, how many of y'all got families? And then it was all like, me, me. So so what's your wife doing? He's like, what do you mean? Well, he's like, you're out on the road 300 days a year. What's she doing? At home? Don't know. Is she seeing another man? Don't know. See another woman? Don't know. She cheating on you? Don't know. Do you really love this business? Because I will die. For oh, my business. God. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember that. Oh. So dramatic. Hey, yeah. triple there. He was trying to get it in their head. It's real. <laughs> it's funny, man.